welcome back. And if you tuned in late today, my very special guest is Senator Lee Bright. And he has served in the South Carolina State Senate for eight years. He is conservative. He is the father of two daughters. And you make your home here in the upstate. Yes. We're delighted to have you. Now, we've got a lot to cover. We, we need about three hours. Absolutely. But what, what do you feel? people need to know. We talk about gun rights, we talk about our liberty, our founding fathers, and it, it just seems like everything's all messed up. <laughs> well, the, the uh, revisionist history is, is on the march, and they, they talk about this country and its founding, and I mean, these were, these were deeply religious people, and I believe yeah. God's blessed this nation because of them. I think so. And a lot of times yeah. in spite of us, and uh, we have really gone off, off the rails, and we've had people that have been elected on a national level who have been very hostile, and they read things in the Constitution that just, quite frankly, aren't there. I mean, they're arguing, you know, as, as we were talking about the restroom bill, they're arguing that, that men have a right to go into women's restrooms in and private the businesses. The bathroom bill. Yeah, it, it is just, <laughs> it is insane. And, and now they're, they're sacrificing our safety on another edge when it comes to, to the, uh, you know, our immigration policy. And then you look at what happened in Orlando and the shooting and, and the fact that, that all these people were killed and now they want to take our gun rights away of self-defense. This gentleman would have had a gun regardless unless you pick up, unless you get all the guns away. I mean, he was a security guy. I mean, he could pass whatever clearance he sure. needed to. Yeah. So um, now they, they, they said the FBI was monitoring, so apparently there wasn't some discussion there. But when it comes right down to it, I believe that the right to bear arms is, is the fundamental right to self-defense. It's a constitutional right, but not only that, it's a natural right. And I believe it's one of those things where, you know, if we can't have a policeman on every corner and you need to be able to defend your home. And a lot of people ask me why I'm so passionate about the Second Amendment. And, and I tell them that when I was, my dad worked third shift and someone tried to break into my home. And I was probably about 10 or 11 years old. And I was horrified. I lived in a trailer, which trailers have, you know, the walls are real thin. Yeah. And I could hear my mother screaming and, and saying, if you, if you don't go away, I'm going to shoot. And she cocked the hammer back on the shotgun. <gasps> the person left. And that then I knew, you know, policemen aren't everywhere. And we need to be able to defend ourselves. So taking away people's rights to self-defense really bothers me. If you look at, at these so states. the right to bear arms. Yes. It's, it's, our forefathers gave us. Yes. Well, I, and I believe God gave it to us. Okay. All right. I believe it's a natural right. right. Now, what else? Uh, about, what else do you feel is important that we need to be aware of? Well, we need to realize that, that this thing of wanting to take our guns away because of, of what, what this individual did to Orlando, I mean, they need to look at, at letting people into this country and being real careful about who comes to this country. They need to be monitoring radical Islamists a lot closer. I mean, when, when you know, th apparently this gentleman had, had some, some comments about how he kind of idolized suicide bombers. I mean, I, I don't think we're, I think the political correctness is killing us. It's killing us on a lot of fronts, but really when it comes to, to these extremists coming into our country, number one, we shouldn't let them, let them in to begin with. But it's a uh, situation where I think the immigration system, we've got people in our country that need to be helped. We can't bring everybody here. No. So I think what we need to do is, is focus more on the people that are already here. If we help people in the Middle East with the tragedy they're going through, I think we need to help them over there. I think it keeps us safe. And, and as far as our religious liberty goes, if we don't get it right on this presidential election, we're in trouble. And we, we, had, we lost one of the most conservative Supreme Court justices in the history of our country. And that he's going to be replaced. And it's going to be determined by either Hillary Clinton. So the Clinton, president will be the one to do that. Well, of course, he has to have Senate confirmation. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we have control of the Senate right now. Uh, hopefully, you know, if, if it's a Republican president, we will get a conservative. And if that happens, then, then I think that a lot of things can be changed. Now, this is one thing that uh, your listeners need to understand that a lot of people don't think about is that these Supreme Court justices and these federal judges, some of them have these terrible decisions. Well, the Constitution says that these appointments are for life. Yeah. But it yeah. says in good behavior. So when these judges ignore the Constitution, they need to be impeached. And our Congress has been derelict in its duties. They need to take the worst of the worst of these federal judges and they need to impeach them. And if you impeach just one, then that, that's a great job. <laughs> the rest of them will snap into line. But these activists like on the Ninth Circuit Courts, a lot of people refer to us as the Ninth Circus out in California. Mm -hmm. If we dealt with one of those and impeached just one of those judges, I think you'd see a lot of change in the judiciary. So what, Senator, 
you know, what can we, it's just, sure, you say, well, get out and vote, but what can we do to make our, to keep our country safe, um, and what, what can we do to help? We've got, a, we've got a vote, like you said. I have an election June 28th, but they, they're, you know, the presidential election's coming up in November. Yeah. But, but voting and, and really communication. I mean, people know friends. Start, talk about politics a little more. I know it's uncomfortable. Religious, religion's uncomfortable to talk about, too, but souls need to be saved. So there are discussions that we're going to have to have that are uncomfortable in order to try to bring people along to our way of thinking. A lot of people think like we think. They're just afraid. So we've got to give them the courage and tell them that it matters. And that's, okay. we've got to impress it upon them. And we've got to pray. I mean, God brought so, us to this point and he can, he can continue us. So we as just everyday people need to be informed. Absolutely. And before you go out and vote or you talk to your neighbors or your family, read, find out what these different candidates stand for. Absolutely. What they say and, and what their background is. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So we need to do that. What else? And well, then we need to get out and vote. Get out and vote and pray. You know, be, and, being engaged in the process, talking to your friends and neighbors. All politics is local. There are people you can talk to that I'll never run into that you have influence over. People don't trust politicians. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> so it's good to go out and talk to your friends and neighbors. There are people watching this show that have influence. They need to get out and influence those folks. All right. And we need to be informed. Absolutely. Before you go to the polls, we need to take time to check on these different people and say, what do they really stand for? I'm not politically correct. I get a lot of hits for that. And I say <laughs> a lot of things that upset <laughs> a lot of people. If you're not going to take the time to be educated and you're not going to talk to folks that are educated and you're just going to go, I had, and I, I appreciate her vote, but I'll give you a prime example. I had election the 14th before the runoff. A lady walked up to me and I told her, I appreciate her to come out and poll. And she said, I'm so glad you spoke to me. I'm going to vote for you. What people need to do is do their research. And if you're not going to be, do your research and you're just going to pick one off the board, just stay home. If you're going to vote, you need to be educated you and get engaged. What these this thing of everybody for. should vote, you should vote. You know, every, everybody has a right to vote, but there's a responsibility with that vote to be informed. Yeah. That, that's, that's the key right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we need, we need and of course, um, uh, We'll have the chance to vote big time for president. President, I, mean, I said I have an election June 28th. It's a runoff, be a yeah. very small election, Greenville and Spartanburg counties. But then in November we'll have an election, and then people just need to be active. They need to be very active. It, politicians, when people don't pay attention, they get into mischief. So the key is paying attention and holding to them. To be informed. Be informed, yes, ma'am. And it takes a little time and a little effort. It does. You're exactly but right. But it's worth it. It is worth it. And so you want to. Not just everything you read in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. You have Absolutely. to read it and think about what this And talk to friends and get other sources. And, and just remember what Jefferson said. They asked him what kind of government did they give us. And he said, a republic if you can keep it. And we're in, danger, keep it. we're in danger of losing it. You really believe that? I believe that with all my heart. We have, we have gotten closer and closer to a direct democracy. And in a direct democracy... You, you trend a lot of times towards socialism because you start to realize that you can vote away the possessions of others. We need a republic. You need to elect the right people, let them go and make the decisions based on the facts, and then every two or four years, then you hold them accountable. Now, you've served for eight years yes, in the South Carolina mm -hmm. Senate as a Republican yes. and a conservative. Well, I tell people that if Jesse Helms was brought back from the dead, I believe I'd be more conservative. So. No, and we have, we're just out of time, but do you want to mention this gun issue? Yeah, it, it's, you know, taking away people's right to self-defense. If you look at these shootings, a lot of times they're at gun-free zones. We couldn't protect the president. I mean, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. That's right. Ronald Reagan was shot. Yeah. I mean, the only thing you can do is, is have a citizenry that's armed and can defend itself. And our forefathers knew that. They knew it. They wanted protection for, they wanted people to protect their homes and they wanted to be able to protect themselves from other governments and their own government if necessary. And of course, with gun ownership also comes responsibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's something that, you know, I, I am not, I don't believe in infringements, so I don't believe in force training, but I think everybody ought to be trained on how to handle a firearm. Yeah. I encourage it. Uh, if, if we ever get a true permitless carry in South Carolina, you'll still need to get the training in order to be recognized in other states. 
Okay. I do appreciate your taking the time to Thank share you. with us, Senator Lee Bright, and District 12, yes. you have served for eight years. I have. That, that is Western uh, Spartanburg and Eastern Greenville County. Uh -huh. Well, we're honored to have you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us your knowledge and, you and so your much. thoughts. I appreciate we it. We all need to get out and vote, but we need to pray and we need to be informed, right? It takes a little time, but it's worth it. And wherever you are, stay happy. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.